Hello, programmers. This presentation discusses functions. All modern programming languages can use functions to build a program. The presentation here covers functions as created and used specifically in the C and C++ programming languages. The topics covered in this discussion include what is a function, library functions, and user-defined functions, calling a function, arguments and parameters, function prototypes, pass by value, pass by pointer, pass by reference. Think about a company that has a boss and several employees who each specialize in one task. The boss can say to one person, build a thingamabob and report back to me when you are finished. This would be like a subroutine. A numeric return value is not returned to the boss by the employee. To another employee, the boss says, count the number of hammers in the tool bin and tell me how many there are. This is like a function because there is a return value which is the count of items. A function is a named block of code that performs some action. The statements written in a function are executed when it is called by its name. Each function has a unique name. Functions are the building block of C and C++ programs. They are used to perform the tasks that are repeated many times. Importance of functions. A program may need to repeat the same piece of code at various places. It may be required to perform certain tasks repeatedly. The program may become very large if functions are not used. The real reason for using functions is to divide programs into different parts. Advantages of functions. Easier to code. Easier to modify. Easier to maintain. Reusability. Less programming time. Easier to understand. Some programming languages make a distinction between the terms subroutine, procedure, and function. Depending on the language, a subroutine or procedure is a block of code that performs a specific function but does not return a value. A function is like a subroutine, but it returns a value that can be stored in a variable or be used as part of an arithmetic or string function. In C and C++, everything is coded as a function. The return data type is listed as void if a function does not return a value. During this discussion, the terms subroutine and function are used interchangeably. Depending on how a function is written, it could return nothing, a piece of numeric data, text data, an object, or even a reference or memory address of a piece of data. In object-oriented programming, the format for an object is defined by a class. When functions are part of a class definition, they are called methods. C and C++ have a large set of predefined functions. The table here shows some of the predefined functions from the math library. Additional libraries of functions are available for manipulation of characters, another library for manipulation of strings, working with time, standard input and output, and others. There are two types of functions, library functions and user-defined functions. Functions can always be identified in C and C++ because there is the function name immediately followed by an open parenthesis. Every C and C++ program has a function named main that is called by the operating system. This is how where the code for the program starts executing. Library functions are provided by the compiler manufacturer. These include console input, output, math, character manipulation, string manipulation, date, time, file access, and many others. People have already written and tested these functions, and they are available for you to use. Here is sample code in C and C++ showing the use of the SQRT math function. SQRT calculates the square root of a number. You can see a difference in the include statements. C uses the pound include stdio.h for the standard console input and output, and C++ uses pound include io stream. The angle brackets indicate that the include file is already on the disk in the compiler's include directory.
bound include math.h is the original include file for C. The C++ version has a few slight changes to math.h, so its version is named CMath. The C prefix indicates that it came from the C language include file, and the .h is no longer placed as part of the include file's name. Other than using printf or cout and scanf and cn, the call to the sqrt math function is the same. For the rest of the discussion, only the C++ version of the code will be presented when the only difference between C and C++ is the printf cout and scanf cn. Functions can have any number of parameters. The data that is passed to a function is called a parameter. For example, rand has no parameters. Square root has one parameter. Pow has two parameters. Total has four parameters. A function is called by its name. The parameters in the function call are passed in the order they are listed. The order is important. There is a big difference in the result of pow, 2, comma, 8, which is 2 to the 8th power, which is 256, and 8 to the 2nd power, which is 64. No arguments are given to the rand function. When called, it returns a random number. One parameter is given to the square root function. When called, it returns the square root of a number as a double data type. In this case, the square root of 25 is 5.0. When called, it returns the value of the first number raised to the power identified by the second number. 5 raised to the third power is 125. Since the values passed to the power function are doubles, they do not need to be whole numbers. If you are a math whiz, you can figure out how logarithms and exponentiation are used internally for the POW function to give the answer. Because each of these functions has a return data type of double, when calling the function, it acts the same as if a double numeric value were used instead of the function. The return value from a function can be stored in a variable, or the function itself can be part of an expression. The first example shows the return value of square root being stored in the variable named hypotenuse. The second example shows the return value of square root being used as part of a numeric expression. Unlike many other programming languages, the C and C++ versions of the RAND function return the same sequence of numbers unless the program calls the SRAND function when the program starts to seed the random number generator. The random number generator is typically seeded by calling the SRAND function with the time of day clock when the program is started. That way, running the program again will produce a different set of random numbers. C and C++ allow a programmer to define their own functions. A user-defined function groups code to perform a specific task, and that group of code is given a name followed by an open parenthesis. When a program begins running, the system calls the main function and starts executing code from main. When control of the program reaches to add to, open parentheses, value 1, comma, value 2, close parentheses, the program passes the 7 and the 5 to the add to function. Code in main is paused and the add to function starts execution. The return data type for add to is declared as an int. The add to function has two arguments named a and b that receive the 7 and 5. a and b are local variables for the add to function, meaning that they exist only within the program block defined by the curly braces for add to. Another local variable named c is declared within the add to function. Values in A and B are added together and saved in the variable named C. In this case, C will contain a 12. The return C semicolon statement returns the integer value from C. The C out statement displays the answer is 12. Each function can have only one entry point, the top of the function, and should only have one exit point, the return statement at the end of the block of code. In this example, a minus 1 is returned to indicate an error. 
A return statement can be placed in the middle of the block of code as part of an if statement, but it's considered bad programming practice of the function. Here is a better way. There is only one return statement, and it is at the end of the block of code for the function. If n1 is a zero, the variable name result is set to a negative one to indicate an error, and the rest of the code in the function is skipped. Else, if n1 was not a zero, the rest of the code is executed. In either case, the function returns the variable result at the bottom of the function. A function is defined in one part of the program, and a call to the function is activated in another part of the program. In this example, the function is defined above the code for main, and it is called within main. The function is defined with three arguments, double in one, double in two, and double in three. Inside main, three parameters are passed to the sum of three functions, 22.6, 5.8, and 11.93. The argument list defines what data and its data type is to be passed to the function. The parameter list is the data that is passed to the function. It took me a while to catch on to the definition of the words argument and parameter. The argument list is for when the function is defined, including its function prototype, discussed a little later. The parameters are the list of data that are passed to the function when it is called. If it helps keeping these definitions straight in your mind, think of the int main, int argc, comma, character star, argv, at the top of each C or C++ program where it is defining the function main. The operating system has the ability to pass parameters containing the count and the list of parameters on the command line if the program is started from the command prompt. This could be done in Windows by starting a CMD window or on Mac OS by starting a terminal app. Parentheses directly after a name defines that a function is either being defined or being called by another part of the program. When parentheses are used that do not follow a name, they are considered to be part of a mathematical expression. Curly braces define the block of code that becomes the body of the function. The return data type can be any type of data or even an OOP object. The return data type defines how the function is to look when used as part of an expression. Here is an example of calling the sum of three function from within main. Main passes the parameters 2.6, 5.8, and 11.93 to the sum of three function. When sum of three executes, it receives the 2.6, 5.8, and 11.93 into its own local variables n1, n2, and n3. It then computes the sum of the three values as 20.33 and stores the answer in its local variable named result. The return result semicolon statement passes 20.33 back to the part of the code that called the sum of three function. In this case, it was called from within main. Main can then place the result of calling sum of three, which is 20.33, into its local variable named x. Functions can be placed before main. Functions can be placed after main, but a function prototype needs to define the format of the function. Functions can be placed in separate files. Function prototypes need to be provided for each function that is used. If a project contains many functions in many separate files, it is common to collect all the prototypes into a header file and then use the pound include to bring the header file into each file of code. Function prototypes are also known as function declarations. C and C++ are single pass compilers. That means that everything must be defined before being used. The compiler needs to know in advance the data types and the number of arguments for each function before it is able to correctly compile the program. A function prototype is defined similar to the function definition, but without the body of code. Function prototypes end with a semicolon. 
when defining a function prototype, the return data type, the name of the function, and the order and data type of each argument is given. It is not necessary to give a name to each argument. A prototype is also called the signature of the function. A header file typically contains a collection of function declarations or prototypes. The math header file also contains several constants such as mpy, which is 3.1415, etc. Header files that are provided by the compiler are usually in the compiler's include directory and are identified by angle brackets around the name of the header file. C++ examples such as found include IO string, found include CMath, C examples found include stdio.h, found include math.h. Projects that are built from several C or C++ source files may reference functions in a file other than their own. The function declarations would then be placed in a header file that is referenced by each of the C or C++ source files. Header files that are part of the project have their name enclosed in quotation marks. Example, found include quote my underscore functions dot h. When the type conversion is performed automatically by the compiler, it is known as implicit type conversion or data type promotion. For example, if you add two numbers where one is an int and the other is a double, the int value is promoted to a double before the addition occurs. The same thing happens if you store an int value into a double variable. The int value is promoted to a double and then stored. However, if you try to store a double into an int variable, the compiler will either give a possible loss of precision warning, or it will give an error message and won't finish building an executable program, depending on how the compiler's configuration properties are set. The same type promotion happens if a function is expecting a parameter of type double and it is passed an integer. The implicit type promotion takes place. But if a function is expecting a parameter of type int and it is given a double, either a warning or a compiler error will occur. The programmer can force a type conversion using an explicit type conversion, also known as type casting. Type casting in C is done in the following form. Open parentheses, data type, close parentheses, expression, semicolon, where data type is any valid C data type. And expression may be a constant variable or expression. In this example, placing open parentheses int, close parentheses, in front of the double pi converts the value 3.1415926 etc. into an int 3 losing the digits past the decimal place. C++ has several ways of explicit type conversion. The most common is using the static underscore cast operator. Since C++ is an extension of the C language, it can also use the C style cast operator. Void functions are commonly used to display a message or clear some part of a form. If the function is not going to return a value and the function call is not going to be part of an expression, void can be used as the return data type. In this example, a function is created named display largest. It uses a cout statement within the function to display the larger of the two numbers. The return semicolon statement is optional since the function does not return anything and it is immediately before the closing curly brace. The function would end at the close curly brace even without the return semicolon statement. Pass by value. The function works on the local variable, not a variable located in the calling routine. Pass by address. The function works on the variable that is actually located in the calling routine. Even though the return statement can return only one piece of data to the calling program, more than one piece of data can be sent back to the calling program when parameters are passed by address. Passed by address can use either a pointer, both in C and C++, or a reference, only in C++. 
Let's look at a sample program that attempts to use a function to swap two integers, but the arguments are passed by value. The swap function receives a 7 in the function's local variable named a, and a 5 in the function's local variable named b. The values in a and b are swapped, but since they are local variables, they are not placed back in main's variables named value 1 and value 2. Main then displays the original contents of value 1 and value 2 that are not swapped. The updated program passes the memory addresses of value 1 and value 2 to the swap function. Since the swap function receives memory addresses of value 1 and value 2, it is not working with its own local variables, but it is able to modify the contents of value 1 and value 2. Pointers give us the ability to work with data that is not in the local block of code defined by the curly braces. The prototype and function declaration uses the int star to indicate that the arguments are pointers to integers instead of actual integers. Inside the swap function, we are still using the names a and b, but now these are pointers instead of actual integer values. A is receiving the memory address of value 1, and B is receiving the memory address of value 2. When swap open parentheses, ampersand value 1, comma, ampersand value 2, close parentheses, is called inside of main. The address operator is used in front of ampersand value 1 and ampersand value 2. Star A is said to dereference the pointer. That means it is referring to the data in memory that is being addressed by A. In this case, temp equals ampersand A is getting the data from value 1 that is in main, and star B is getting the data that is in main's value 2. When star A or star B is on the left side of the assignment operator equals the data is stored in mains value 1 or value 2. Additional information on pointers is provided in a different discussion. Now we can see that value 1 and value 2 that are in main have been swapped by the swap function using pointers. The C++ language provides an easier way to work with memory addresses. It is providing the reference notation in addition to the pointer notation. Some languages like Java have only the reference notation and do not use pointers. References are a much cleaner way to work with memory addresses. The function prototype and function definition use the ampersand operator to indicate that a reference is going to be passed to the function. When swap is called in main, it is no longer necessary to place the ampersand operator in swap value 1 comma value 2 and the pointer notation with its ampersand is no longer needed inside the swap function. We can see that value 1 and value 2 inside main have been swapped by the swap function using references. The Visual Basic program uses the keywords by val and by ref when defining a function or subroutine to indicate whether the parameter is passed by value or reference. This is the end of the discussion for the C and C++ functions. Bye for now.